Hey guys, we're here in Proton PJ, run by Regal Motors, where I bought my Iris and my X70 before. But today I'm going to pick up my brand new Proton X50. So come join me as I take delivery of my new car, and I'll tell you why I bought it and what I'm going to do with it, or rather, not do with it. Jump. First things first, a few details. I booked this car on the very first day itself, September the 16th. So there's no queues jump, there's no special treatment here. A lot of people have even asked me this. I've received zero discount, none whatsoever from Proton, as confirmed by the CEO, Dr. Lee Chun Rong himself. Crypto Baru, none of the discount bro. Speaking of booking, I never actually thought of buying the X50 from the very beginning. That is until I saw the car at the media preview back in September. From that point on though, I was hooked. I came here the very next day. The timing was good too as I was about to sell my old car anyway, the Peugeot 208 GTI. That car had just gone past 5 years so the warranty had ended so it's about time for a new car. And now that I have a coupe at home, it makes sense for me to buy a more practical car as my second vehicle. At this price range, with this feature set, the Proton X50 makes absolute sense for me. It's a no-brainer. Best option by far. Its combination of stylish looks, performance, comfort and practicality really hits the mark for me. The Hyundai Kona with a similar package is over 40,000 ringgit more expensive. And the Honda HR-V is completely outclassed in this price range in my opinion. The X50 does have a lot of minor flaws, but overall I still think it's an excellent buy. Do check out my full review of the X50 to see if it would fit your needs too. So this is it guys, my brand new Proton X50 flagship in citric orange. I'm a happy, happy boy right now. You can't see it, but there's a big smile behind this mask. Now, the funny thing about the color is when I first booked the car, I chose the passion red option. I mean, red is just my color. Most of my cars have been red as well. Plus, the car looked really, really good in the initial media preview that was set indoors. And then I saw it under direct sunlight at the Sepang test and I thought, man, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Ada macam taxi sikit. So I quickly ran through all the other color options. The white, silver and grey looks a bit boring for me. And the blue does look good, but with the red interior, it gives me off a bit of a Superman vibe that I don't really like. So I settled for the only other option, which is this orange. At least it's going to look interesting and unique, I thought. But now that I've seen the orange in real life, man, I'm so glad that I chose this color. It's a bit sensitive to light, just like the red. It's a bit dark and muddy indoors, but under direct sun, it absolutely shines. I love it. For the number, I've chosen ALT3118. ALT because it's my alternate car, get it? And 3118 because it's the exact same number I used on my very first car, a Pro 2 Kumbara, way back in my college days. Now that this is a small SUV again, it seems I've come full circle, so the number fits quite well. This car is already tinted as arranged by my sales advisor. I've chosen Luma Diamond 6. I've had that in a few of my other cars. It's pretty good, very good specs, very high heat ejection. But best of all, it's JPJ compliant. It's just not too dark. Of course, I've also applied a very good tint on the sunroof to cut off a little bit of that extra heat coming off the glass roof. That's something you have to do whenever you have a car with a sunroof. This though has got to go. It's like I've already paid for it. Now you expect me to be a free billboard for your brand? No, this comes right off. Coatings, I haven't done any. I might do it just once to gloss it all up, but nothing much beyond that. I'm not the kind of person who would baby my cars too much with coatings and PPFs and even a screen protector for the small touchscreen inside. No, that's not for me. PPFs are just way too expensive from the start and most of the time they would spoil the look on the paint. So, nope. My advice is just enjoy the car guys. I'd rather just drive the car and enjoy it rather than worrying about small little scratches or stone chips. But then again, I'm also the type of person who uses my iPhone with no casing on, not even a screen protector. So yeah, that could just be me. As for modding or customization, I'm not really a body kit kind of guy, so I'll probably just leave it as is. If anything, I might just demod it by wrapping all this fake carbon fiber stuff around the car in gloss black. I'm not a big fan of fake carbon fiber at all. And while I'm at the wrap shop, I might just get them to wrap the car key to match the body colour, give it a bit of that Porsche vibe, you know? 
But that's as far as I would go. Bigger spoiler, nope, I like it as is. And the same story with side steps too. I don't think this car is even tall enough to need side steps and it just looks much cleaner without it. Call me boring, unimaginative or whatever, but hey, it's just me. You do you, I'll do me. Now I have opted for the optional urban package for this car, voluntarily that is. It wasn't forced on me in any way. But they don't have a stock for it right now, so I'll take the car first and install it later when they do have it. Like many of you, I've chosen this solely for the power tailgate option. The rest of the package, I don't really care about too much. The tow reader can be quite useful, yes, but the magnetic sunshade and the coil mats, I'm not even gonna put them on. I've always found aftermarket carpets really ugly anyway. Right now, this is still the only way to get electric power tailgate without voiding your warranty. Going aftermarket is gonna be cheaper, of course, but that is going to affect your warranty, plug and play or not. Trust me, I've asked Proton on this. Warranty is clearly very, very important for brand new cars. I mean, if I didn't care about warranties at all, I wouldn't have sold off my old car. Now, as for fixing a few of these car's flaws, the first thing I'll do is stick on a few DIY 3M hooks in the back here because I just don't want my small shopping bags or food takeaways to be rolling around the back of the boot. Proton small hooks, tapau hooks, you created this. We need them now. The next big issue, the lack of Apple CarPlay. Now there's no fixing this, so the easiest workaround is to have a phone holder and just put up your phone like a grab driver of sorts. Actually, there's a nice one that latches onto the middle here where you can hang your phone, but hopefully it won't block too much of the screen. You know what's gonna be funny? If I were to put on the phone holder directly on the screen itself, now that would be the ultimate insult to the screen engineers. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, guys, come on. We, that's what we all want. And that's about it really. The wind noise issue, I've seen a few people trying to do DIY fixes, extra sound deadening, using window visors and whatnot, but I think I'll wait and see what Proton does about it. Hopefully they can come up with a proper fix really soon. So I think that's it for this video. I'm a really, really happy kid right now, so excuse me while I enjoy my brand new car and breathe in a bit of this intoxicating brand new car smell. If you have any questions for me on the X50, do let me know in the comments section below. As usual, thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.